Setting up your control hub and driver station for the first time can feel daunting as a new FTC team, but it's the single most important step before you write a single line of code. Today, I'm going to show you how to do just that, step by step, in a low-stakes testing environment. By the end of this video, you'll be able to set up and learn how to program every motor and most common sensors that you'll use in an FTC competition without ever touching your main robot. My name is Coach Pratt, and for the past 10 years, I've been teaching students about robotics and technology. I've coached FTC teams to national championships and Inspire Award wins. I've seen countless teams struggle with this initial setup, and this is the process that we use to get it right every time. I'm going to walk you through the entire process step by step. We'll start by updating and renaming your control hub and driver station to make them competition legal. Then I'll show you how to pair them together. And finally, we'll configure all the hardware in your programming test bench so you're ready to start coding for the rest of this Java series. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do update and make sure that we have labeled the control hub to be something that is FTC legal. So the first thing you're going to need is a USB C to A cable. Now you're gonna want a USB type A connection. Now, for whatever reason, a USB C to C cable does not work for connecting a control hub to your computer. You have to use a USB A to C. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into a Windows computer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into our USB C port on the Rev control hub. Once I've got that plugged in, I can go ahead and turn this on. You should get a solid blue light turning on your control hub. Uh, that knows that it's actively waiting for power at this point. And we're going to head on over to the Windows computer to get this thing recognized. It's going to take a little bit for it to get recognized. We can see we've got a control hub via USB-C. And then you want to make sure you're on the latest version for both your control hub operating as well as your controller app. It's giving me a bit of warnings here, but it's not a huge deal because this is these are just warnings for if you have an Android Studio installed an older version. So make sure that everything is up to date. And at this point, we can go over to Program and Manage. And underneath Program and Manage, we're going to go ahead and click Manage because we need to change the name of our robot. Uh, the name of our robot has to be our team number dash RC. So typically, you would write, you know, 23014 or 24090. Uh, I'm just going to keep this as Pratt RC because this is going to be used for a test bench. I could even call this one, let's, let's call it Bench. We'll call it Bench-SRC, so we have that. I'd suggest that you give yourself a new password that is not the default password, because you're going to have to set this up in a bit more secure way. And then you should select the 5 gigahertz band over the 2.4 gigahertz, and then select auto, automatic channel and Wi-Fi channel. Now, this is a nice tip. Sometimes you might find you some sort of Wi-Fi analyzer when you're at a meet, that certain Wi-Fi channels are more overloaded than others. So you can use this Wi-Fi channel selections that you can set a specific channel that's going to, that may be perhaps less populated and you may have a better connection to your robot in that case. At this point, we can go ahead and select apply Wi-Fi settings. And its name has been changed. If you're connected, it's going to disconnect and then refind it. Now our control hub is set up. We're going to go ahead and move this one out of the way. We can disconnect it from our computer. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and connect to the USB-C and make sure that our driver station's on and that we're at the home screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in via USB-C. So with our driver hub connected to the computer, we're going to go ahead and select driver hub. And at this point, we're just going to make sure that our driver hub operating system is up to date and the driver hub station app is up to date. At this point, we're good. And we can go ahead and actually transition over to the driver hub itself. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. One thing I want to note. This tutorial assumes that you have set up and wired your programming test bench the exact same as I have mine set up here from a previous video. If you haven't set it up in this orientation and wired it into these specific ports, following through these next steps, you're going to have to make sure that you have yours routed to the correct ports uh, for how you have it wired up. But if you followed through my tutorial video for setting up this test bench, it's going to look the exact same as how we have that. I can come over and my control sub now has a bright green light set up onto it. So now I can go ahead and open up the FTC driver station app. We'll go ahead and connect to the correct robot here. It's currently saying disconnected. So we're going to come up to three little dots here. We're going to say, we're going to come up to settings. 
come down to pair with robot controller. We're going to go to our Wi-Fi settings, turn on our Wi-Fi, and it should be searching for our Control Hub's Wi-Fi here. And we have bench-rc. We can go ahead and type in our password here. Once you type it in select, it should be able to connect, and you are now good. We'll go back into our driver station setup. Now that we've connected to our Wi-Fi, you'll notice that we're getting an error that Android 297 does not meet our correct name. So we can go ahead and tap on that warning. We can click on settings. And then here we can say a driver station name. At this point, instead of saying Android 2987, we can go ahead and put in our team number. In this case, I'm going to use bench again because this is our test bench. Team number dash DS for driver station. And then that is it. We can go ahead and go back and we'll be set up ready to rock. So now at this point, we are now connected to our bench RC as well as our bench driver station. We can see we've got about 12.4 volts. And uh, the next thing we have to do is we have to actually do our configuration of our hardware because on our programming board, there's a whole bunch of hardware that's set up to specific ports. And you need to tell the driver station what hardware is physically connected to each individual port. So to do that, we're going to come up to our settings and we're going to choose configure robot. Underneath configure robot, you can go ahead and select a new configuration. I'm going to go ahead and edit my test bench configuration here. For this control hub portal, you can just leave that the same name. It doesn't matter. You can go ahead and tap into that and then you can tap into your control hub. Now let's start by going through our list. We have a lot of things connected here. So we're just going to go in order. We're going to tap on motors. And for our motor, I presently have a GoBuilda 520234 series, and I'm just going to name it with the name Motor. I'm going to use lowercase for all of my names here, and I'm actually going to be using snake case to label this. Now, typically in Java, you do use something called Pascal case or Camel case, but for any of my individual hardware, I like to use snake case. We'll talk about what that means in a moment. So you can, if you have a different motor connected, you can go ahead and select the current motor. But at this point, I'm assuming that your test bench is set up exactly as my test bench is. We'll select done. We'll come to servos, and we have two servos connected to our testing bench. We have a continuous rotational servo that I've called servo underscore cont, or for short, for continuous. And I have a servo, servo underscore pos, for positional, or short for positional. Now, this is snake case. You have an underscore and all lowercase, so that you can see where things are or so you can see the names really easily. We'll go check done for servos. We'll select digital devices. On port zero, we have a lead underscore green. And on port one, we have a lead underscore red. And again, it is also a lead. On port two, we actually have nothing. And port three, we have our touch sensor. So if we look on the control hub here, when we look down on those physical ports for digital, you see it says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 7. You can actually have multiple ports here connected via your digital ports. And on the touch sensor, it actually ignores the even number and only communicates over the odd number digit. So for our touch sensor, you can set it up as a rev touch sensor. I don't like doing that personally. And the reason that I don't like doing that is because this allows us to add in one more method in our function that's more similar to how a real software dev or how a real roboticist is going to be uh, importing some of these in. So I do that as a teaching device. It's not actually wrong to set it up as a ref touch sensor, but I set it up as a digital device because it allows me to use this as a teaching device later. Now for the same thing on ports 4 or 5 for a magnet limit sensor or a magnet limit switch, we're actually going to set it up on the odd number and we're going to call this snake case again as a digital device. Again, you could set this up as a rev touch sensor. I like to use a digital device because it allows us to have one more teaching method again with doing this. Wouldn't be wrong to set it up the other way, but you can't do it this way. At this point, we're done with our digital sensors. We can go to include done. Now, one thing I do before I select done here is... On your actual robot, you should name this something more appropriate. So for instance, touch sensor, that's probably a pretty poor name on your robot. Instead, you might want to have it say something like your claw touch sensor or your front of robot, more F-O-R touch sensor. You want it to have a more descriptive name so that you know which touch sensor is plugged in here. But because we're doing this all on the testing bench, this is totally acceptable. We do not have any analog input devices on our test bench, so we're going to ignore that. On the I2C bus, zero, 
we're actually going to leave this as an IMU. And you're going to use whatever your rev internal IMU is. You don't have to change this one. I'm going to come to I2C bus 1. We're going to select a rev 2 meter distance sensor. And we're going to call this sensor underscore distance. We'll choose done. We'll go to I2C bus 2. We're going to have a rev color sensor V3 is what I've set up. I'm going to do sensor underscore color underscore distance. Note that this is also a distance sensor, but it's only good to about 10 centimeters. So I don't like using this one for distance much, but I do call it a color distance because it technically does both. We can select done. I2C bus three, we don't have anything connected. And at this point, we have our motor connected. We have our two servos, both continuous and positional. We have our touch sensor and our magnet limit switch and our red and green LED. We have no analog input. We have our IMU on bus zero. On bus one, we have our uh, sensor distance. And on bus two, we have our sensor color and distance. So I'm going to go ahead and select done. I can go ahead and select done again. That's going to ask to come up with a name. Now, in this case, I like to use camel case. So instead of using test underscore lowercase bench, we use test capital B bench. It kind of looks like the hump of a camel whenever you add more labels. So we can go ahead and select OK on this configuration. And then the last thing you have to do is you have to click activate. So we're going to click activate on our test bench. And after we click activate, it's actually going to disconnect our robot. It's going to restart it. It should make a little bloop. Restart robot complete. We're now connected. And all of the hardware we have connected to this programming board is all set up here and ready to go. And that's it. At this point, your testing bench is all set up. It's configured. It's wired. Your driver station set up, your control hub is set up, you're now both FTC legal for both of these ready to rock, and we can actually start with doing some programming. So if you'd like to learn more about programming this, you can check out the video in the description down below for more FTC tutorials on how you can actually start programming these things in Java. And if you want to get a little more learning yourself, there's also a description down below to a fantastic book called Learn Java for FTC. The author of that is excellent, and I highly recommend you take a read through that book uh, to get some more tips and tricks on using Java for FTC. So I hope you found this useful and best of luck on your next robotics project.